Hey guys, and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap. I'm Zelda Master, and in this episode, we're gonna be scaling Mount Cornell. In the previous episode, we got ourselves the bottle and some nice hot spring water of the Cornell Mountain, and uh, yeah, we got it from up there. So if you don't know where I got it, I got it from here in the end of the last episode. And now in this episode, I'm gonna be continuing to scale it. And uh, yeah, we should do well. I also picked up five bombs in the previous episode, and hopefully they will do, because in here, we should be able to buy 10 bombs from this Deku Scrub, but for 30 rupees, and I don't have that money, it's too much for me, so I'm really hoping the 5 bombs will do, uh, if not, then oh well, but I just gotta keep that in mind, you know, if I ever do get the amount that I actually need. Hopefully I don't accidentally click uh, A, though, so I'm actually gonna switch my item, because I tend to do that. Um, where I don't want to use, like, you know, a certain item that's equipped it to A, but I click A to slash instead of B. But I'm trying to get used to it. You know, I want to use B as my sword item. I just honestly don't like the fact how you can switch. But let's go ahead and suck up this guy. That's his, this is the way to do it, I believe. Yep, Ezlo is going to have to tell us how to do it, but we already know. So who cares? Let's go ahead and spam A and keep fighting these guys. I want to kill them because I think they drop some pretty cool loot. At least I hope they do. So let's see if they do. Nah, it doesn't seem like it. One rupee. I'll, I guess I'll take it. Whatever. But yeah, you can easily avoid these guys. I was just hoping I'd get something nice from them. Like maybe a fiver or something. But I'm going to avoid them. They're going to try to ram into you. But you can easily just walk past them. And here, we're going to find something really weird. So how silly of me. Oh boy, jump into that vortex over there. For me, I think I got an idea. So he's not even going to tell us. But if we do jump, we'll be able to use as low as like a um, freaking parachute or something. And now we can glide around. How awesome is that? There we go. We go from vortex to vortex. Dude, this is going to be pretty helpful throughout other areas. So you want to keep that in mind. But anyways, up here, let's go ahead and kill these guys. We're going to need four bombs exactly right up here, I believe. So... Yeah, this is going to be a little risky, but it's going to be worth it. We're going to go ahead and place a bomb here. Wait for it to explode. This is a little secret that holds a really valuable item, and that is a piece of heart. So I really want to get that. And then this will also hold some cool chests that I'm going to pick up as well. But here we got ourselves the piece of heart, of course. Let's see what's inside these chests. I believe one of them are bombs. I think, at least. I'm not entirely sure. I hope so, because if so, that'd be awesome. But one actually had a kinstone piece which we really need, I guess, you know, it'll help us fuse with someone, and oh, another one is 50 rupees, so actually that's better than bombs, because now I can head back and buy some, and I'm actually gonna do that real quickly, so the easiest way to make our way back down is uh, just heading over here, and literally just jump down like that, so yeah, luckily you're able to backtrack quite a bit throughout this area with ease, though scaling it again is pretty annoying until you make it to a certain point. Anyways, I believe we need a save 40 rupees so this is perfect actually when you think about it we're paying 30 for this and we'll have exactly 40 left for something else i like the way this is going honestly um that's actually really funny how this is working but this guy actually wants to trade a kin stone piece i don't think we have the piece for him i mean we only have like two pieces on us so yeah we only have one we don't even have two dang all right so we don't have a lot <laughs> we'll be collecting a crap ton soon but not now Anyway, something I really like about this game that you may or may have not noticed is that enemies don't respawn unless you completely leave the area. So even if you exit in and out, as you can tell, yeah, these enemies are gone. So there only should be two over here. But generally, they don't uh, respawn unless, you know, either you shut your game or exit the whole place. So I, I like that a lot. It makes, um, you know, backtracking and stuff a whole lot easier, which is really nice. And... To me, it's just cool, because regardless, you want to be able to farm off of the enemies, especially since their loot is usually crap, it's like a rupee, but I'm going to kill these guys. Anyway, so this is the reason why we need the Hot Spring Colonel Sanders water, <laughs> um, and you're going to see why in a second. So over here, actually, let me quickly check what's up here. Okay, we can head there. Over here, you're going to find a small thing that we can shrink with. going to skip... Um, all the small, you know, cutscenes of us turning into a minish, unless it's a rock we haven't been on, or a stump, or whatever. Anything that will, like, any platform that will turn us into a minish, if we haven't been on it, uh, I will show it. If we have, then I won't, so just to make this go by faster. But here is a little secret, so let's go ahead and make our way up here. A little, uh, little tricky, I guess. Not really, it's just some platforming. 
that you have to avoid. And we'll be able to pick up a Kinstone piece. So yeah, awesome. Let's go ahead and continue on now that, that now that we have done that. I don't want to slur my words, but he continuously do that. God dang it. I don't know why I do that, but I do. Oh man, you can roll pretty fast. So yeah, that happened. I fell. And that kind of sucked because I lost a quarter of a heart, which is a lot. I was already missing half heart. Man, this is freaking hard, dude. I'm gonna get over soon. Kidding. This game is actually one of the few games in where I never had trouble with hearts, surprisingly. Um, but that's just how I did it. Why did I? Why did I turn back to normal? I just realized I don't want to be normal. I want to be a little minish boy. <laughs> because uh, we want to head over here and see that giant bean thingy. Well, we have to go fetch it. So let's go ahead and roll through these branches if I can. I really like rolling through them. I love the shading right here. Yep, you actually, like, it affects Link visually. It's really cool. The graphics are ridiculous for a Game Boy Advance game. It's one of the best. It's actually this is my favorite Game Boy Advance game of all time, but that should be obvious because I love Zelda so much, with this being the main Game Boy Advance game for the Game Boy Advance. The main Zelda game for the Game Boy Advance, that's what I meant. Obviously it would. I mean, we, we also had four swords, but you know, I don't like that that much. It's it's good, but not the greatest. Mainly because you have to play with people. I had no friends. Actually, no. Honestly, we I beat the game with friends. Believe it or not, it was always on the bus every time we'd go to school because I always you know rode the school bus uh, when I was in elementary school. So um, yeah, that's how I would beat it. We'd like have small sessions and uh, play together, and it was really fun when you think about it. But I don't know. I like this game more because it's more main. You know, it's a main Zelda game, I guess. Anyways, as you saw, I used the Colonel Sanders. Obviously, it's Colonel, but I'm going to call it Colonel Sanders uh, Spring Water and was able to make this magic beanstalk grow into the sky. And with that, we're able to advance. You can pretty much tell what's going on. I don't have to always be saying what I'm currently doing because I'm sure you guys can tell, obviously. <laughs> But yeah, and with this, we're gonna we're gonna suck up this shroom so we can jump. I actually don't know why I did that. I didn't need to do that, believe it or not. I was supposed to head down here, place a bomb right here. Yes, this is another secret. Anything that you just see like an empty wall for, try to bomb it. That's it's a Zelda tip to you all. But this will take you to where you want to go, like literally where we're gonna head to. But with a kinstone in between, and I believe another piece of treasure as we progress up here. So it's a good thing we're taking this route. Yes, it is. So let's go ahead and place this. All right, get away from me. Not that choo-choo. That choo-choo is going to hurt. All right, there we go. Oh, we get more bombs. Sweet. All right, I'm just going to push this guy back. These guys can be stunned with bombs. Uh, not something I recommend, though. Honestly, what I would do is... Can I push this up? There we go. Um, is wait for them to come up out of their weird spiky form and then just try to spam attack them. But... If we didn't go this route, we could have easily used the mushroom to leap over and jump here. But since I went through that route, I was able to pick up a kinstone, and it was honestly worth it. So yeah, at least that's my opinion. So. Anyway, let's go ahead and make our way over here and continue on. We're doing pretty well so far. I don't think I skipped anything major. Is there anything here? I actually don't know. This might be a little noob mistake here, but I'm just going to try. Yeah, I knew it. Oh well. Um... <laughs> Just wanted to make sure, but let's go ahead and head up here. I believe the secret I'm looking for is up here. If we make our way over here, is this it? Nah. I'm being fooled. I just want to like place bombs everywhere, hoping I don't skip anything. But over here holds a really, 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 really special item. Um, and we need 40 rupees. I'm pretty sure for this. Please tell me my memory serves me correctly. Let's talk to him. Okay, you got me. Let me make it up to ya. The fabulous grip ring is perfect for a young mountaineer like yourself. Climb in style over... Okay, sweet. We're doing it. So now we can climb the mountain for 40 rupees, my friend. Yes, we got the grip ring. It's kind of weird how we're getting really major items from casual NPCs. Not from chests. Not something you'd normally expect in a Zelda game, but that's how it works. So look at that. We can head up and down, and this will give us a huge shortcut back down to the ground. And I actually want to do that because... I'm going to take out my bottle real quickly, and I'm going to put a nice and clean fairy within it. Because, you know, why not? That is the real question. Why the frick not? That's what I want to do. So, uh, the fairy fountain was right here. I'll be able to replenish one heart. 
I can grab one sweet there we go we cut our fairy now if I do die on accident this fairy will come out of its bottle and give me a another chance in life so instead of getting getting a game over I have that so I won't need a resort to that unless I play really clumsy but uh, I'm gonna just have it just in case so yeah but anyways I want to make my way up here back to where we were so we can just continuously climb this like so and I believe up here holds something let's see what's up here exactly because I'm rather curious ooh this is this hot that we actually can't do anything in you'll notice these weird platforms we stumble upon one in the previous episode but I didn't mention anything about it they will all make sense as we progress through the game there's a lot of things like that that you're just gonna have to ignore and yeah I'm sure you want the question and answered and stuff for you but you know we're just gonna ignore it so anyways uh I want to head over back oh geez oh come on come on screw screwing up <laughs> I want to make my way over down here because there's no point to be here anymore I believe and uh, make my way down here as well so there's no point to me to, for me to head all the way back up I don't know why I backtracked but I want to make my way over to this side because we haven't yet went up here this should take us up to the uh, Cornell wall and the mines were you know where we were earlier and, uh, yeah. okay so here is a really important secret that we want to check so let's wait a little bit and voila inside we'll find a piece of heart so also there's a fairy fountain so I should have kind of knew that dang it well I forgot oh well with that fairy fountain we could have replenished our hearts here instead of backtracking but I don't care it's, it's whatever that's our second piece of heart here on Mount Cornell which is pretty good I love how Link had freaking moves to the side he moves so much faster than uh, heading upwards which actually makes sense Anyways, here it says no bomb throwing, but you actually want to do that. The game is telling you to do otherwise, but this is the real way to do it, my friends. In here, we'll find a fairy fountain. These fairy fountains are really valuable and important within this game. They won't heal you, but if we throw a lit bomb into the water, it will obviously set off. Uh, well, it won't go off, actually, but... <gasps> oh... My god, it's a beautiful fairy! So, welcome to the Adventurer's Spring. Yeah. Did you throw a golden bomb into the spring or a silver bomb? What? I, didn't, I didn't throw any. I didn't throw gold or silver. But you think she'll give it back if I say gold or silver? Hmm, maybe I should say gold or maybe I should just say silver. Ooh. Let's say neither. Let's be honest. We're, we're truthful people, so you are honest. I must reward such an honest adventure with some of my power. And we got a big bomb bag. Now we can hold up to freaking 30 bombs, my friends. Super important. So my lesson to you guys is stay truthful because if you do, good things will happen. Uh, thanks, yeah. That's my tip, everybody. Everybody clap. All right, thank you. Anywho, let's go ahead and continue heading upwards through uh, this place. If, even if we get hit by those boulders, I don't really care. I just want to keep heading up. We have to climb this ginormous wall as soon as we can. And uh, once we do, we'll be good. But up here, we should find this. Ah, God dang it, man. He hit me each time. I just find a way that will take us down here. Here's a little secret. I don't think anything too important is in here. Yeah, it's an NPC that we can't really do much. I believe he actually wants to uh, swap kinstone pieces. Yes, he does. Let's try it. It will actually give us a piece of heart. I doubt we can do this. Just trying it out. Yeah, we cannot. Okay. So that's what happens. For, the, for you curious Georges out there, uh, there you go. We can't really do much here. Oh, are you serious? Die. I would. I could use a heart. Um, come on. I might actually need to use my fairy soon <laughs> because I'm being pretty clumsy. Anywho, let's go ahead and make our way over here. This is where we really want to go. Let's quickly kill this freaking tech who didn't jump on me. <gasps> Give us a heart. Yeah, son. All right. Now, no, no, get away. Don't want to mess with these guys. All right, so we want to pull this as far as we can. Once Link's face is red, we can easily jump this and... <gasps> So, the first course of action is to turn into a Minish and make our way over here to this little tunnel for these small ones. And you'll notice something. 
These raindrops are like boulders of water to us. Watch out, kid. Or, kid, watch out. Yeah, so, we're in bug life, guys. Remember how the water was so huge and scary? It's just like that here, because we're so small. These freaking little raindrops are ginormous when we're in this form. We have to avoid them, because they will take a quarter of a heart. But, once you do that, we'll be able to turn back into human form. And, uh... Continue moving, so, uh, first thing I want to do is push this over here, this boulder, and then, we're gonna have to push this up, so I believe we, do I do it, I think I do it like this, wait, no I don't, I, I don't want to screw it up, can we do it like this, can we actually, no, I screwed it up, man, I'm, I'm pretty bad at block puzzle, aren't I, alright, you can easily, um, have the boulder reset if you screw up like I did, just by jumping into this. Uh, and yeah, so let's go ahead and actually try to do this correctly. I believe we're gonna push it like this, then up twice, then we push it up like this. Yeah, we're doing it well. Like the music that's playing, it's the really eerie music that plays in like A Link to the Past and stuff, which I personally like. But we only wanna push this one more time. If we push it there, it would have been blocked and we would have had to redo this. But yeah, now we're just going to sit and push this boulder forward. Basically, what we're trying to do is have this boulder fall in that small hole right up to the north of the screen. And then by doing that, we'll be able to advance. So, yeah, that's pretty much the whole premise of this. A little time-consuming, but it's puzzly. And as long as you can get it right, maybe on your second try, then you're good. Or maybe on your first. Like, I could have done it on my first, but I'm stupid. <laughs> I didn't really think it out. Anyways, head over this side, because I believe we'll... Yeah, we'll... We're able to avoid those guys, but now what I want to do is uh, make my way over here, push this down, and yeah, there's a little block puzzle where these blocks can only be pushed to one direction, I believe, yes. We only can push them in one direction, or maybe several, but in general we can't really do much with it, so yeah, we just have to push them around like this until we figure out said puzzle, and I think the puzzle goes like that. There we go, not too hard to solve, but let's keep scaling this frickin' mountain. It's ridiculous how big this is. It's a crazy mountain, I'll tell you that. Um, they made it ginormous, but okay. I'm actually just gonna kill this guy because I'm not in the mood for you, so. And let's go ahead and suck him up. Huh? Oh, wait, come on. And bam, into the wall and he's dead. All right, so there are some pots here that will uh, not allow us to advance, so. You want to take care of them and then pull on this shroom so you can continue on like that. And here we should find, ooh, some more pots. I believe, maybe there's something valuable in here? I'm not entirely sure. Let's go ahead and push these around. I guess I have to push it to this side. Don't know why it matters which side, like to the left or the right, regardless, you figured out the puzzles. Oh, yeah. Here's a little tricky. Uh, obviously, since this is a Game Boy Advance game, you can't really tell that's a Switch. So, uh, it's not really obvious to throw a bomb at first sight, but that's how you do it. To, at least it took me a while when pl first playing the game to figure that out, because I'm pretty dumb. Wait, didn't we pick up a red rupee and a blue? How do we only have 23? What? I'm pretty sure we just picked up a red and a blue. They should be 25. Okay, maybe I'm blind, who knows. Okay, anyways, here's another one of them puzzles that we have to solve. And we're gonna do just that. Hopefully I don't screw this one up. Shouldn't be too hard, as you can tell. Yeah, we, we pretty much got it. As long as I don't push it on accident, like, the wrong way on accident. We gotta stop here, push it one up, and then there we go. We are done. Uh, obviously, we could have jumped in the hole and jumped out if that statue wasn't blocking the way, but it was, so kind of prevented us from easily cheesing that. Anyways, I'm going to avoid this choo-choo because I don't want to mess with him. I should go pick up this chest. Die, you. Alright, so we got ourselves another kinstone piece. Yay! Awesome. Ooh, and a heart. I actually could use that. For the next section right up ahead, I believe this is the final area to the uh, Kernel Mountain. Uh, right in that small hut you see towards the left of the screen uh, is where the... Minish live here in uh, Mount Kernel, but to make it to there, we have to cross through this. It's not actually that hard. I thought it would have been hard to get filled with those enemies, but there we go. We're in the uh, Melorize, or Melory, whatever. Screwed it up. Who cares? We're in the mines of the Minish. <laughs> 
So you got them you're using their little baby pickaxes and mining, and yeah, they look cool, I guess. So this mine belongs to M Malari, I believe. Yeah, that's it. And us, his seven apprentices. Did you, uh, did you ting to ting along tong along all this way to get your sword repaired? Yes, I did actually. The boss is down, the lowest level. All right, so we have to head over to the boss. Is he a boss fight? No, he's not. Wish I could have jumped that, but. It's really nice. This is a cool place. I actually really like this small, like, mines area that they hang out in. There are a couple of rooms and things, but I'm gonna ignore them and talk to him. So, hey there, Chief. So, green clothes and an odd hat? They, they really like the hat, I guess. Sir, my, might you be Young Link? I am Malari, Master Smith. That's what he is, I guess. So, I hear you want to reforge a sacred sword and help break a curse. I'll be needing the old sword, which holds the power of the elements first. Show me the broken Pokori blade. I love this adventure uh, with rescuing the princess and such. I'd be happy to reforage this thing into a brand new sacred blade for you. I'm gonna place it down, so here we go. Both pieces. I didn't only have the bottom half too, which is kind of cool, but to forage it together, it's gonna take some time and we need to track down the missing elements while he is working on it, so. Yeah, there is a new area right up ahead, believe it or not, if we go ahead and actually... There'll be, yeah, there'll be a while. We can't sit here and wait. We have to continue on with our adventure. But while they're working on this, if we look on our map where the next element actually is, it's right here. We're literally right by it, so... That is the next temple, guys. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to this guy. He should let us through, so... What, you're going to the mine? If you talk to the boss, it won't. I won't stop you. Okay, sweet. So we had to talk to the boss in general to even pass through. And now that we're in, uh, the top, we're at the top of Mount Cornell, we can take on its spooky mine. It's not really spooky, but yeah, okay. Holder of the sacred power. Cool. That happened a lot already. So, hey, that's, how, how do you, how does this surprise you every freaking time? I don't understand. Whatever, cool, blah, blah, yada, yada. Okay. Now, guys, in the next episode, we shall be entering this mine and taking it on. So, thank you all so much for watching this episode of The Legend of Zelda Minish Cap. And in the next episode, we're going to be entering the next temple. So, I'll see you guys all then. Mm -hmm.